Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. All right. First and foremost, call hello, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim, Dash. Of course, double honors. Once again, go out to the apostles, bishops, and elders, great millstone, uh, <laughs> who deserve double honors and who rule well. Yes, you just still hear fireworks. Uh, although that wicked ass holiday is over, you know, I'm still going to talk about it. Uh, so like it, but also salutations go out to the fellow Akim out there on the highways and byways across four corners of the earth, pushing the truth, all right, uh, with all honesty and sincerity and all due diligence, uh, trying to wake up the remaining hopefully elect. This is Naaman with the DC camp, and yes, let's go in on this wicked ass holiday. What you see before you up on the screen here is a segment of uh ntd news which I, I watch you know you have to go behind enemy lines you know you know be up on how the enemy's thinking what he's up to uh and this here is a retired colonel and uh, he's lives in virginia just across the river from me here in the district uh in this particular instance uh case he's in dale city they had a little parade there and uh, I want you to pay attention to what he, you know, they have these little, because they really think people are stupid. You hear these little snide remarks. Uh, and he's kind of trying to speak in code. Trust me, I think you'll pick it up. Here we go. Foundational to America. And what's beautiful and wonderful is there's a lot of uh, new uh, immigrants and arrivals that are in many ways far more appreciative and understanding of the importance of the 4th of July as opposed to Americans who have potentially been here for a while. Who could he be talking that, about? Uh, are, are not as appreciative. So we need to always remember what this is a hollow day. This is a, a hollow day. day. To what? Celebrate in a, a positive, to who? Uh, enthusiastic way. This morning we had the Dale City Parade that. Uh, uh, myself and about uh, it was a very large one of the largest parades in Virginia on the 4th of July and my church uh, uh, marched in the parade along with many others but it was wonderful and that's the way we should always celebrate remember and recognize the 4th of July it is the United States after all and John Mills thank you so much for your time Tiffany thank you always an honor to be on your show thank you all right now let's fast forward All right, here's a rabbi. Voices call it irredeemably racist. On the other hand, Rabbi Yaakov Menken, managing director of the Coalition for Jewish Values. Let's roll that back, see if I can. I got these fat fingers here. Move out of place when cars went by at high speed. The man who took the video told park officials and also called the local fire department. Officials and also called. You have. Carowinds said the ride will remain closed until repairs are complete. Here we go. The United States is known as a beacon of hope. To who? The American voices call it irredeemably racist. On the other Who hand, could Rabbi she be Yaakov talking Shikin, about? Managing director of the Coalition for Jewish Values says America has been a country of kindness. NTD's Chris Beers found out what the nation means to him earlier today. Rabbi Yaakov Mankin, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Rabbi, the United States is home to the largest Jewish community outside of, outside of Israel, as I'm sure you know. Why is that? What does the United States mean to the Jewish people? Well, it's, it's really been a, a country of kindness uh, because the United States was built on tolerance and the idea that there is no state religion so that everyone can have their own religion and their own... Sure it is. You lying piece of shit and you're part of it. It's called witchcraft. <laughs> you got all this Freemasonry. All right, this, first of all, should shatter this myth that we were indoctrinated with. Yes, the I word. All right. 
They uh, want to uh, accuse people now of indoctrination because the truth is coming out. And they label it as critical race theory. But you've been doing that to people all along. Indoctrination with lies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A country of kindness. To who? Freedoms and enjoy the same freedoms. And that is something that uh, the first president, George Washington, promised to the congregation of uh, the Jewish congregation in Newport, Rhode Island, several hundred years ago, when he said that uh, he quoted the prophet Micah and said that every man shall be able to live under his own fig tree and there shall be none to make him afraid. Do you feel like the United States has lived up to Again, what is he leaving out? He wanted to quote Micah. He wasn't talking about any and every man there. And that's what, you know, as far as this indoctrination of our people, they really consider, I mean, they really consider, they really believe, all right, that this Constitution, uh, you know, in reference to this Constitution, that it really had our best interests at heart. Nothing about this country has ever had our best interests at heart. And I'm going to read you an article. All right, but let's continue with this. Again, what is he not saying? All right. Well, certainly for most of its 250 years, the United States has really fulfilled, and, and that is why you had so many Jewish immigrants fleeing persecution in other countries, in parts of Europe and, and Russia and Ukraine, coming over here to, to find a better life. And of course, after World War II, there were times when it was better, times when it was worse. But by and large, America was really into this idea of individual freedom, make your own choices, we will tolerate each other, and we will live together. Just think of the the wicked mind that knows that this is all bullshit, all right, and expects other people that know that it's bullshit to follow along. You are not the people, all right, you are not descendants of, um, so like, uh, you are not descendants of of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Your descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. You are of the nation of Edom. And they can get, in this case, on media outlets and say all this with a straight face because that's what you're dealing with in a devil, a liar, and a deceiver from birth. Psalms 58 and 3. Let's get that real quick. Let's get that real quick. I mean, yeah, Lord, let's see. Uh, Psalms 58 and 3. It says, prayer for the punishment of the wicked. In fact, let's start at the top. To the chief musician, Alta Shith, next time of David, do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? To yea, in heart, ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. All right. This is what this guy is doing here. Alright. He is even by omittance. Alright. Even if you want to look at it that way. For one, he's pre pretending to be something that he's not. And two, he just told you that this has been a place of what? <laughs> uh, <sighs> my goodness. You know, Fulfill, U.S. fulfilled promise to the Jewish people. 
Well, I suppose in that that sense, yeah. But again, it goes back to you pretending to be something that you're not. Again, you are Talmudist. You have nothing to do with the people of the Holy Scriptures. And so many people confuse the two. And they know this, and it works, all right, in their interest. They benefit from this confusion, all right? You people try to pick up a Talmud and read that shit, all right? I'm talking about some wickedness, all right? Let's continue on with this lying-ass bastard. That's really very much of what enabled America to become such a great country that you had the Church of England in Virginia and the Amish in Pennsylvania. See, too, they know full well what they're doing. And this, in a sense, is making mockery of us because they know full well who we are and they know who they're not. But again, they play this game. And so not as much as used to be the case because people have, you know, and this is just, you know, I can't give you a percentage of who knew what when, but definitely, especially the last, I want to say 20 years, but maybe not, maybe more like 10, 12, something like that, people have been forced to read the scriptures. And that's, you know, uh, you know, Yahweh Shem Shah, you know, uh, We've been out there on, on the corners, and they've seen via uh, social media outlets, namely YouTube, you know, some have incidents have been confrontational, but at the same time, you were edified. All right, and a lot of people said, what are these Negroes talking about? Oh, get my Bible there, uh, Mom. So, oh, Holy shit, maybe, well, oh, don't say that out loud, but now you know better than that bullshit you were taught in church. Again, indoctrination, since they want to accuse supposedly uh, uh, people that <laughs> uh, accused of uh, you know, promoting critical race theory of indoctrination. No, you've been doing it all along. And your schools are just bullshit, all these lies that, well, let's just call it for what it is, give it the respect that it deserves. They've been outright lies, all right, that benefited you, all right? This was propaganda at its best. That's all we were subjected, subjected to as a people. White supremacist propaganda, indoctrination. And now everything's falling apart. So you have that other idiot that we heard from earlier. Well, you know, the immigrants are appreciative, but the people that have been here, like I said, trying to talk in code, the people that have been here for a while, you know, <laughs> and fuck yeah. And then you got this jackass here. Let's just continue on pilgrims of Massachusetts and they were all getting along so they all got along with the Jewish community all what oh <laughs> so again this is why it helps to know the history just caught him in another one everything was all peaceful we all got along you know the pilgrims uh, the Jews and uh, the Native American so-called. And you've got it, where is that book? I got it up here, uh, the Almanac. They tell you that they knew that the so-called North American Indians were Gadites. They were Israelites. Well, they still are. I'm talking about back then. All right, they knew this. He's a liar. He's a thief. You know, a devil, a liar and deceiver. All right, this is what they are. Let's try to get that. Oh, no. 
This is why we tell you these things, because this is who you're dealing with. All right? What is a devil? All right? A sub subordinate evil spirit, a demon. Three, a wicked or malevolent person. You're not talking about number one. Number three. Mm. I'm going to try to give you this, you know, uh, other mess, which I'm not going to even get into. Continue on. Rabbi, just going a little bit deeper there, President Ronald Reagan famously said, freedom is a fragile thing, and it's never more than one generation away from extinction. In your mind, have we heeded this warning, and are we doing enough to safeguard this freedom? I think that's really a moment. I think he was speaking about right where we are right now, barely a generation after his time as president, because you look at the United States today, and you know, for all this time, we said we're not going to have a state religion. And now there is a state religion. If you don't believe that a boy can be born in a girl's body, you are a bigot. And you have to absolutely violate your religious beliefs. If you believe that marriage is uniquely between a man and a woman, you are called upon to violate your religious beliefs. That's very much against America's common freedoms for all that were accepted for 200, nearly 250 years. Just in closing here, Rep let's stop it again. This lying piece of shit, because the Talmud and their teachings, all right, where do you think all this gender bender shit is coming from? That's right. So here, see, he, 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 he glanced right over that. I wonder how many people picked it up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Again, this is where all this wicked ass shit is coming from. These pieces of shit. They are the wicked, alright? Now we got gunshots. <laughs> alright, so lock you. Alright. Yeah. Let's continue. What would you most like younger generations to understand? Oh, my point in bringing that up, I'm sorry. I got distracted momentarily, but look up the eight genders. States. Uh, the, the, the worst of it is the young people saying that something is irredeemably wrong with America, that it was founded on racism or founded on slavery. These are not true. The United what? States was founded on granting individual liberties. You look at other countries around the world, let these young people look at all the countries around the world. Where, honestly, would they rather live? I think we look at, on balance, America is... Granted, okay. But again, that goes to your propaganda. When they get here and stay here for any length of time, they can't wait to go back. Something you're leaving out. And as far as uh, people saying that the United States was founded on slavery, you see what I was talking about? This is why I've said, whenever from now on you hear about some hollow hoax bullshit, anything making reference to how these people supposedly suffer, you know, I don't know how you're going to handle it. Me personally, either just get up and walk out, you know, as I can't say how to re really to respond to that, but, you know, it's bullshit. All right, they've told these monumental lies, all right, and got the world to sympathize with them, you know, these professional victims that they, that they are, and they've gotten wealthy all right off of this shit off of the lies 
all right? He said with a, with a straight face, just totally ignored everything, all right, having to do with us and our suffering. Didn't even bat an eye. So my question is, why don't you do it with them? Just tell them, I don't want to hear that shit. You're a fraud. I don't care. That's your problem. Be as cold to them or colder. And say, being that they were the ones that profited off of our misery directly. Going to Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, you know, it. Man. And this only works because people believe these people are, you know, the chosen. But that's being destroyed now. That's a good thing. That's what we're out here to do. 2 Corinthians 10th chapter, verses 4 and 5. All right. That uh, what they thought was uh, they could get away with it. You know, they know now that their time is short. Oh, they're very aware of what's going on. Uh, this is 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. All right, you have to keep it spiritual, all right? But mighty through Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Hamashiach. Yeah. These indoctrination centers that they call churches. Attendance is dwindling. Especially with the men. All right. The information how am I going to put this? All of the usual ways that they could. I mean, granted, you still got, you know, your social media. That's why they tell you not, you know, look at so much TV because it's programming. All right. This whole thing exists off propaganda. And like I say, so many people now are seeing through the bullshit. This is what's got them concerned. That's why, you know, especially that, that retired army colonel, you know, was making them comments because they see their empire, their kingdom falling away. <laughs> they do. All right. So let's go back to this old dried up ass fucking rabbi. Doing as well as any country on earth, and we should be very proud of that. And be trying to build that up, not tear it down. See, because you got to understand, too, this piece of shit here. You know, they got America in their pocket. All right. America kisses these motherfuckers' ass, you know, and they send them money every year. And uh, they hook them up with weapons. Uh, so, you know, they're benefactor here. But. The downside to that, and it's prophesied, all right, these motherfuckers are going to do something stupid. I'm talking about them over there, those occupiers of the land. That's why they're called Israelis and not Israelites, and they know they're not Israelites. But again, that's why it's so much of a blessing that the Holy Spirit will work with you in order for you to see these things. Because going to Again, these devil's universities to learn their bullshit, their propaganda. All right. You consider yourself educated, but you're not really. All right. You're being told what to think. All right. 
and this was a method. I forget the re preacher's name right off the top. You know, I can't recall it. Um, in that early, well, yeah, the early 1800s. I can't remember his name, but uh, yeah, I won't even get into that. But he was largely responsible for how Jake. Uh, aside from the fact this is the most high is doing, all right, uh, but he was heavily instrumental in uh, the way Jake thinks as far as uh, Christianity uh, today. So the devil that he that he was. But in any case, yeah, this is what they had counted on. We were supposed to be locked in tight to Christianity, and, you know, being this forgive everybody mode, but nobody f fucks with us in that way. So. They thought they would had this cycle, cycle thing gone, and it was going to go on forever. And that's what this guy that I'm making reference to even said. All right. But, um, yeah, it's all falling apart. They can't stand it. They really can't. Uh, just glanced over any, any and everything having to do with what we went through. And... Uh, <laughs> As if, again, trying to sweep everything under the rug. You see? I just read to you what a devil was. Alright? <laughs> and this all goes back to that birthright. He thinks he uh, is going to get it back by casting us in a bad light. That Revelation 12, verse 10. Alright? And so much, so many, I should say, so many of our people have just, this place has destroyed. That's why we say you got to get your mind out of America. You can't leave physically. Well, what's the next best thing? Get out of all this shit, you know. These pagan holidays, you know, Jeremiah chap uh, 10th chapter, all that. Quit following the, the uh, traditions of your oppressor. It's not going to benefit you. It's quite the opposite. This has been a challenge for our people throughout history as Israelites in these other lands adopting the uh, religions and traditions of other nations. And it's been to our uh, detriment. All right. But in any case, let's see what else this fool got to say. Well, Rabbi Mankin, thank you for joining us and happy 4th of July. Well, Thanks. that was it. <laughs> Now I want to read to you briefly this article. Uh, where did I find it? Oh, it's lucky. All right, let me see if it's still up here. Here it is. Talking about slavery in America, who really owned? Uh, that's not the one. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Ten reasons why blacks should not celebrate July 4th. All right. Independence Day in the terms of true liberation and true freedom didn't happen for us on July 4th, 1776, and it didn't happen with Juneteenth. In fact, it has never happened for us in this country, but it did happen for white Americans, so-called, or Edom, 247 years ago on July 4th. And their joy was our pain, their ecstasy was our misery, their heaven was our hell, and it still is. That is, Salaka, that is precisely why we should not celebrate the birth of American white supremacy. In fact, there are at least 10 reasons why we should never celebrate July 4th. Let me count the ways. <laughs> America hated us even before July 4th, 1776. Because when you understand who the players are, starting with us, we being the true Israelites, not Israelis, Israelites, and they being the nation of Edom. All right. Now you understand what's going on. America started hating us when it began enslaving us. Nope, before, but on this side. All right, let's go with that. But you got to remember, they got the Northern Kingdom, so-called Latino and Native Americans first. All right? 
right, in uh, 1619, and it still hates us. In fact, just five days before July 4th of this year, America's Supreme Court, and I'm familiar, you're familiar with that, on, July, on June 29th, uh, they did away with affirmative action. Me, personally, good. Because the only one that truly benefited off of affirmative action was the fucking Edomite so-called white woman. Facts. All right. It says that's why uh, the uh, Honorable Supreme Court Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, in dissent in that case, talking about last Thursday, wrote, Gulf size race based gaps were created in the distant past, but have indisputably been passed down to the present day through the generations. We should not celebrate the independence of the very same country that still has those gulf size race based gaps. Two, on July 4, 1776, when the edited version of the Declaration of Independence was formally adopted by the Continental Congress in Philadelphia, 41 of the 56 signers of that historic document enslaved black folk. Three, one of those 56 white men, the drafter of the Declaration of Independence, namely Thomas Jefferson, enslaved 175 black men, women, and children in 1776 and increased that number to 267 by 1822. Four, when that historic document was adopted in 1776, slavery was legal in all 13 colonies, which means 20% of the population was enslaved. All right. Five, despite the claim in the second paragraph of the Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal, there were more than 500,000 enslaved black persons in the 13 colonies from 1776 to 1800. Six, after the Continental Congress declared independence and then declared war, oh, and this is real fucked up, this alone, all right, uh, uh, beside the scriptures not telling you to, all right, this alone should say, you know what, fuck this shit. Six, after the Continental Congress declared independence and then declared war, General George Washington initially banned black men from joining the military. But when he uh, began losing more and more battles, he relented, after which over 5,000 black men volunteered and helped lead the colonists to a 1783 victory over Britain. But despite volunteering and helping to lead America to victory, Many of the survivors among those 5,000 black men were re-enslaved after the war. Remember also Christmas Addicts, all right? It was the first one to fall in that. <laughs> and he goes on to say, what the fuck? Let me read that again. But despite volunteering and helping to lead America to victory, because George Washington made uh, a promise if you do this, I'll, you know, you win your freedom. Many of the survivors among those 5,000 black men were re-enslaved after the war. Thank you for your service. Come get these niggers. Seven. By the way, speaking of General Washington, he also enslaved 316 black folks at his Mount Vernon, Virginia plantation and illegally enslaved nine of them right here in Philadelphia at 6th and Market Streets, where America's first White House was located. All right. Oh, and by the way, on July 2nd, 1766, he traded a black man named Tom for a keg of molasses and rum. Eight, as a direct result of the July 4, 1776 Declaration of Independence and the 1775 through 1783 Revolutionary War, a new government was established via the 1788 U.S. Constitution. And because a racist apple doesn't fall far from the racist tree, the Constitution itself was a racist document. And in part continues to be, as shown in the three-fifths clause, Article 1, Section 2, Clause 3, the Electoral College Clause, Article 2, Section 1, Clause 2, the continued importation of Africans. We're not Africans. We are Israelites. All right. We are Shemites. We were never Hamites, as the uh, so-called Africans are, all right? We were refugees there. It says, uh, 
the continued importation of Africans into slavery clause, Article 1, Section 9, Clause 1, and the free states to return escapees to slave states clause, Article 4, Section 2, Clause 3. How brilliant in its wickedness what the fake Jews did. Uh, just label them as Africans, just mix them all in. Nobody will know the difference. All right. And there's scriptures in, in the Bible that tell you about especially when it talks about Ethiopians, all right, how he was mistaken for us. And even with the, uh, in Genesis, all right, I believe it's, uh, is it chapter 50? Wait a minute. Is it 50? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where the funeral for, uh, uh, for Jacob. Yeah, I, I can't remember. I think, I think that's right. But anyway, uh, people had a, you know, difficulty uh, making a distinction sometimes because we shared complexion, all right, and uh, certain facial features, and then you also have, you know, but the spirit is different, but very different, all right, um, between the two nations, and that's one way you can tell, all right. It says in connection. It gives you, I'm not going to go, you know, number nine gives you a, a list of all the presidents. It says, and 12 of this country's presidents enslaved anywhere from one to 316 human beings. And it gives you a list, all right, with culminating with George Washington with 316, Thomas Jefferson with 267. Ten, following the Declaration of Independence in 1776 and the Revolutionary War victory in 1787, some of America's greatest facilities Symbols were built, but not by free white men. Instead, they were built by enslaved black men. They include, among others, the White House in 1792, the U.S. Capitol in 1793, and prior to free white men declaring their independence in 1776, enslaved black men built George Washington's Mount Vernon, Virginia estate plantation in 1758, and Thomas Jefferson's Monticello, Virginia estate plantation in 1772. Therefore, don't celebrate white independence on July 4th. Instead, promote so-called black liberation by doing this. Never forget, always avenge. So there you have it. Yeah, lie upon lie upon lie upon lie. All right. That day is over and done now. Good riddance. Hopefully won't be here for another one. All right, hey, so uh, hopefully you were edified in that, uh, how they just conveniently, and with a straight face, you got to understand, Habakkuk 2 is what, getting, is what is getting these pieces of shit. And Habakkuk 2 and 16 says, all right, in verse 4, and this is telling you, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. This is a wicked, evil, mischievous person. That's why I read the definition of devil to you. This is 16. Habakkuk 2 and 16. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Because, see, all that propaganda that in years past that you self-promoted, talking about how pious you were, how, uh, the, you know, the, the Bible thumpers, uh, et cetera, you were so pious, like I said. Um, <laughs> and now everybody's finding out you're anything but. It was just an illusion. All right. Uh, thou art filled with shame for glory. All the atrocities that you committed, everything's coming to the forefront. And you can't sweep it under the rug because one of your inventions, the Internet, <laughs> And all these things really are coming back uh, to bite you in the ass. All right. But this is the most high is doing. Uh, Psalms 19 and 4 and Romans 10 and 18. You know, these things were used. These devices were used. All right. To spread the word out. You know, and amongst doing that, everybody, even your own people. I referenced uh, Psalm 64 and 8 a little while ago. Uh, all these things are coming out. Second Thessalonians 2. 
uh, you're being revealed for the scumbag that you are. Uh, thou art filled with shameful glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Most High's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. You can't run away from it. All right. Everybody's got these little, you know, pocket supercomputers that just happen to have a phone connected to them. All right. And you're getting all this information in real time. But <laughs> this is of your doing, of course, at the hands of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right. You are being exposed. And it is beautiful. Beautiful. This is a good time to be alive. You're seeing the downfall. Oh, let's get the scripture. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Yep, I had it at Second Thessalonians, second chapter. The man of lawlessness. That's who we're dealing with. All right. The wicked of the earth. Now, uh, let's see. Let's go to uh, Sirach twenty-five. Verse 7, there be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy, and the tenth I will utter with my tongue a man that hath joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. And that's what we're seeing now, the fall of this wicked piece of shit, so-called white man. We're seeing his fall. All right, so hopefully you were edified seeing this video uh, like I alluded to in my opening time is short people all right you don't have the luxury of time anymore you're seeing we are seeing uh, these prophecies uh, and they're just jumping off the pages all right there's one big one that everybody's waiting for the C hip it's out there for everyone to see. All right. Hey, so with that, until the next video, hey, shalom.